to get used to from high school to now is that when I was in relationships in high school and crazy stuff used to go on, my mom would always be pro me, 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 me. But as I grew up and now that I'm in like kind of a more serious relationship, she's like, okay, Amber, like you need to stop and look at yourself though. Sure. Like you need to, he probably said this because you tend to come off this way. Right. And not justifying the actions. She Mm -hmm. doesn't really focus on the actions Mm -hmm. because she doesn't really care and I don't really fill her in on those, but I mostly go to her about communication issues. Okay. When it comes to things like, you know, all the other goofy stuff, like I leave them out of it because that's goofy. Like, at the end of the day, like, I just think that I'm very, very, very specific about what I go to my parents about. And I also make sure that, like, I'm not bashing the person I'm with as well because a lot of people will go there. When they they talk to somebody they trust, it's not really them asking for advice. It's them venting. Yeah, and and so they tell every damnable thing about the other person. To the point where it becomes insulting. It has nothing to do with him forgetting the milk at the grocery store. And you know he's always forgetful because he's stupid. Right, right, right. (laughs) You know, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This has nothing to do with him leaving the milk at the store. And sometimes so. it takes, you know, and um, I appreciate you sharing it because, you know, it takes um, it takes the hearer or the one who's listening to be mature right. and be able to um, distinguish or um, decipher what you venting and an open door for them to give their opinion. Now, right. I'm a dad. Uh-huh. All right. I'm, I'm very protective of I'm my sure. daughters as well as my son. OK. Mm-hmm. And so when they come to me. There is this inkling within me, first of all, to protect. Right. And Cause, so. Because you're not even focused on what she's saying. No. You're like, I want to find the boy. Right. My child and is. And we'll talk. Yes. My child is crying. Okay. <laughs> something has to be wrong. And right. It, it ain't going to be pretty when I see him. Which I know. is why I talk to my mom. Okay. <laughs> 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 and so, um, I mean, I, I look at it, though, you know, it's a thin line because there are times when you are needed as a parent or you right. need to involve people. Right. And then there are times where you need to work some things out yourself and not get people involved. Definitely. Now, now this is a very serious, significant uh, topic that, that we're dealing with. And I want you all who are listening, please call in. Amber, give us that number one more time, MBZ. It's going to be 626 253 Five zero one zero. Or and they can chat with us when? They can chat with us right now live on Spreaker.com on our Straight No Chaser page. Yeah, I, because I really want to hear some personal uh, Some story. personal things because I, I know for a fact I have counseled people um, in my profession where where their their family literally destroyed wow. their relationships. And see, uh, that's sad to me because, like, that's that's... I think there's a thin line Mm -hmm. because I think that if I had the kind of parents who, I mean, I've seen situations where, especially because, I mean, as you know, your son went to my old high school. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of like athletes at that school and Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And so now that I know some of these people on kind of a more adult basis, I've seen all kinds of crazy things where, you know, the two people are decent people. They're together. But it's like the mom is focused on. I've seen a lot of situations where moms are focused on their daughters um, being with money. Okay. So it's like you could be in the perfect relationship. But, oh, what is he doing? What's his major? Oh, he's a journalism major. Oh, no, no, no. That's not going to make any money. You're supposed to be this and you're supposed to be that. And it's like you have those kind of people who like get those kind of thoughts in your head. Or you have people who come from different backgrounds. And it's like, oh, well, he wasn't raised like you were raised. So that's not going to work. Which sometimes that does make a difference. But it's like, okay, let me find out for myself. Like, Mm -hmm. like, don't ruin this when I just got here. You know, right. right. So I, I definitely think that that's that's kind of like the hard thing about it, because you do have entire relationships broken, destroyed, and the actions have nothing to do with destroy. The people. But but you know you know I mean, ooh, I have like, a good question for you after you. Oh too. gosh, I'm nervous. <laughs> but you know I, I I come from a close knit family as I stated uh, previously, and sometimes you know you involve. 
people because they've been involved for the duration of your life. Right. Or, uh, and, and, you know, so you, you run things by your mom. Naturally. You, you run things by your sister. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you ask your brother for his opinion. I don't run nothing and, by my sister. Oh, God. No, no. But, but, but see, Mm-mm. sometimes mm-hmm. when, when you do that, there is a sense of entitlement that right. is developed in a person. So then they start to feel just, as if, yes, they start to feel just as if I can, didn't ask. yes, I can right. pry or I can impose or I can mm-hmm. share or, or insert my opinion. Well, you don't need him no way. He's no good and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And so well, one thing I understand is that when you're in a relationship, you have to have courage and be strong enough to maintain your relationship by yourself right. and not allow people to influence how you feel or how you're going to treat somebody. And I think a lot of weak individuals, mm. weak minded people um, find themselves depending on the commentary of another right. to dictate how they're going to navigate through a relationship that they have. The first thing I establish, Amber, my relationship is my relationship. Right. Period. Yeah, like it's, who it's, else is? Right. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's you and Tiff. It's my relationship. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so if I do ask my mom for her opinion and stuff like that. Now, my mother is crazy about my wife. She's mm-hmm. I'm talking about my mom is crazy about my wife. And 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 if I go to my mom or my wife and I call her up on the phone, um unfortunately, she would side with my wife before she side with me mm-hmm. um be- because she always feel like I'm doing something wrong. Uh, right. So, <laughs> but and that's the fun part, but you do have people and BZ who are struggling in their relationships because the family is so influential right. in their ears and in their life that they will abandon someone who they're trying to build life with right. to to accommodate the opinions of the people that they grew up with and, and it's have not around all exactly, the time. Right. and it's not even their relationship to even um, 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 have the autonomy, if you will to speak and continue to speak concerning something that they don't have to walk through. And I think that, you know, I've seen situations like this where when it all comes to a head, it's like, oh, well, we only intrude because we love you. But it's like, I think at some point, unless somebody's being abused in a relationship or they're suffering greatly in some sort of way, right? I I think that you just have to kind of have trust that the person has a little bit of common sense. Like you mm-hmm. have to have a little faith in people yeah. and you just have to kind of like trust it because you know, as much as I could sit here and talk about who I let into my relationships, I can't say that I can't say that it, it's been easy for me to hold my tongue about other people's relationships. Mm-hmm. That is not easy, especially when we have like, Oh wait, we have a chat. We have a chat. What does this chat say, what sir? First, what does the chat say? The first one. Now let's see what it says. Yeah, yeah. You, go ahead, read it. Come on, brother engineer. I am, I am like Jesus. <laughs> I am no respecter of persons. I do not allow anyone's opinion of me and my marriage to affect my decisions or influence my interactions with my husband. I am careful of even sharing details of my marriage. Mm-hmm. I don't want anyone to feel they have a say in my marriage. The movie Acrimony is a prime example of family being a major influence in a relationship. Wow. Mm. I remember that movie. Yeah, that was a crazy that movie. That was a crazy movie. And she lost crazy. and she lost out on a good man and a good life. Um, because of the influence of her family. Her family. But but you know what? That happens a lot, Aunt B. It does. And, then, and I think more and you know, another good point that this um this fan of the shoe um <laughs> shared is that, you know, we're talking about negative things. You you really you should be careful about who you tell the positive things in your relationship with. No, nah, nah, you know what? You, you gotta because, be you gotta you got, really You, you got some people shit. on the sideline waiting. <laughs> For real. For that 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 thing to go south, especially yep. if you shared the wonderful things about the, the relationship, because I I believe and, this. See, and to me, that's the funny thing about I I see it more in female fr- family members. Mm-hmm. You will always have that cousin 
Oh, or God. that sister who, oh, girl, you don't want him. You don't want him. You don't want him. Oh, girl, got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Because mm-hmm. secretly, she wants your man. Oh, wow. Or wants your relationship. Oh, wow. And so it's like you have to be careful either way because that's why, I mean, I can't really say that about family because there's a huge age gap between my sister and I. So I hope she's not trying to come for none of my none of my peeps. Okay. But <laughs> but when it comes to friends, that's what I was saying before. I'm very, very, very careful about who I tell my business to and what because I can guarantee you there's not one friend that knows the entirety of my relationship. So you not don't one. you don't even tell the good things and it, de- and it depends on what it is, honestly. Like I it, just think that some it, things it are confidential. Yeah. So some things are confidential and For they don't sure. need to be shared. Um and you gotta remember that whatever you share with somebody, they're taking a mental note. And let's just say you and your significant other does not work out. Right. That that person remembers the good times even when you cannot yep. and they'll find themselves uh, uh, up, up, up tasting yeah. your tea yeah. uh oh <laughs> now what's your question you have for me Ambezi so this is a question that often comes you know okay so uh oh I love Judge Lynn Taller. Okay. Who is the judge on divorce court and she's all also on marriage boot camp okay and so God God knows this about me and bless me by putting 20 seasons of Divorce Court on Hulu. So you can guess what I've been watching for this last week. Mm -hmm. And so one question that always comes up is, does somebody's baby mama or baby daddy Mm -hmm. get to have some sort of say about who you are with because they are half of your child? Absolutely not. Please share. I, I, I have to deal with that <laughs> because um, I think that when you have a child by someone in a previous relationship, that responsibility is yours and that individual's. Right. Okay. That person should not have the authority to dictate who you're going to spend spend your life with or spend your time with. Mm-hmm. I think if you allow that, then you've allowed that person to influence your life. Mm-hmm. And and that person feels entitled to make decisions um, vicariously through you concerning your life. And then they it, it, they start to use your child then like kind of like a pawn. Exactly. That and that's yeah. why th- that's why in this sense or or in the case that you're speaking of you have the judicial system. Mm-hmm. You have the courts that establish parameters and boundaries where you can have visitation and things of that nature. Right. When the person tries to use the child as a pond um, um, and keep the child from the person because the individual has moved on. Right. Um, I believe it, and it is so disheartening if someone uses their child because a relationship did not work. So now you are preventing and prohibiting that person from being a parent. Right. I think if you, if you all have broken up, you've broken up. Right. Point blank period. And I, and it's important to remember that like, you are not the only parent. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) I mean, obviously, whether if you're the mother or the father, just mm-hmm. because you guys are broken up doesn't mean that you're going to all of a sudden start, you know, dressing your kid up in honey and sending them to beehives. Right, like, right, right. You know. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's it's a very it's a very sensitive situation where where the two individuals have to have a backbone and have courage to lay down the law and say this is not going to happen. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, even if I be a little transparent, I had a previous situation before I got married. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I have I have children um, with, with a previous situation mm-hmm. that that does not concern um, what I'm doing in my life. Right. Now, my wife has a wonderful re- relationship with, with my children. It's it's great. Mm-hmm. And and we've established parameters and boundaries where people cannot voice their opinion in our relationship. I don't right. allow that. Watch this. Not even my children, Ooh. because one of the things you yes, got to understand. One, one, of the, one of the things you got to understand, MBZ, is that one day you're going to leave, right? And you're going to have your own family, and you're going to have your own life. Yep. And so, if parents begin to allow their children to dictate their lives just to accommodate the child, 
what happens when the child grows up and leave? And now they're and a parent has alone. made a decision. <laughs> a parent has made a decision right. based upon the child's desires, right. and not upon not based upon its own desires. So, my my thing is, I make decisions for Carrie concerning Carrie, right. as I pray and be led by the Spirit of God. Other than that, everybody else can give their comments and opinions, but those comments and opinions does not have enough authority to determine what I'm going to do in my life. Right. Point blank, period. I think that's that's great. And I think that's a perfect place.